Hello out there everybody, welcome back to the bench and today we're going to be going over the Posh H series airbrush set and um, this is that basic style Venturi effect where it's just blowing air straight out and it sucks it up through the glass jar and out the front. It mixes it on the outside and it's an external mixing airbrush, not an internal like, uh, like my Badger Patriots are. Where the paint comes in from the top, it mixes the paint and air right here before it actually comes out. With these, the air is actually forcing the paint from the jar out of the airbrush. So here is the set. Let me hold it up for you here first of all. Looks like we got a hanger so we can hang it up on our bench. Comes with a hose. Now it has its own style fitting on the end, but it happens to come with the hose which fits on the end and this fits any standard airbrush which is pretty nice I already have my brush set up with a quick release so what we're gonna do is let's try and pull this out and show you guys what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get our fitting on it and it comes with one I'll show you that in a second now behind it is nothing this is just so your hand holds holds it you know in a comfortable way see it there's nothing here it's just a dead end <laughs> it, you can actually brush it like this if you want it, but you're not going to get any leverage. So the, this aluminum piece here just screws right in, and it's basically there for balance. As a matter of fact, I'm not even quite sure why it comes apart. And uh, there's no pulling back or anything. You're just going to release the air from the compressor straight out. And this is where it comes in right here. You get your standard jars. I'm not happy it came with plastic, but we're going to show you our solution to that in a second. It just plugs in. And you're often spraying. You can spray quite a bit by filling this up. And the force of the air going across the needle sucks up the air, I mean sucks up the paint and comes right up here and you can adjust it right here and you can make it closer to the outlet or further away and that's how you adjust your fan. I personally found a sweet spot for going less or small. What you do is you use their, and let's open this up in front of you guys here. It comes with a bunch of uh, nozzles, so it comes with three, all right? And here, how's, here's how you can tell. Hope, I, hope you guys can see this. See that? One notch. See that? A bunch of notches there. Was that five notches? And the one that's on it is in the middle with three. One, two, three notches. So this is the middle. Obviously, this is the smaller one. I can show you the difference right here. Give me one second. Check this out. You could probably see the size difference right there. Look at that. I'm over here because I'm sitting that side of the camera. I always say that. Get the lighting here. Get my arm out of the way. So yeah, look at that. So this is like a garden hose <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. This is probably for working on actual car parts, real cars. You know, this is probably good. I think you would use this one. And the one in the middle is my favorite that I've tested. And uh, for this test, we're going to stick with the one in the middle. But I am going to show you how to change the nozzles. But uh, for the test, we'll, we'll keep the middle one going. And here's how it works. Here's the needle. This is this portion right here. And you can see the hole in it here. And that's where it causes the magic to happen. You just screw it on. And this, once it's mounted in, you adjust it this way. You're tightening in on the air force or letting out more air this way. And that's how it works. Now it comes with an adapter. So you can fit it onto a standard hose. See that? And I can put my quick release on the end of that. We'll do that in just a second. Also, instead of uh, filling up a big jar, it comes with a cup. And the cup has a perfectly shaped inlet. And there you go. You can fill the cup you're off to the races. Now to clean it out you would pop this off or the glass, tip it over, we're gonna put some drops in there and blast it out and then I guess you can do a quick change is what we're going to show you uh, one of the best features of this and uh, primarily this airbrush is going to be for doing uh, primers so I got a nice big wing here of a plane, plane kit, we're gonna put a nice gray primer over this uh, we'll do some all clad gray primer so we're going to blast that across here. I'll show you how good that is. 
And then we're going to do a, a little bit of a, I have a car body. We're going to spray some blue over the car. And then we'll try uh, some metallics. We're going to use this uh, Tamiya uh, metallic brown, really nice color. And we're going to try that on some uh, Gumpler pieces. And of course, we'll try it on some uh, spoons. Um, but let me show you the real draw uh, of this unit. And that is to have multiple jars ready to go. Now check this out. I just ordered this. This is from Master Airbrush. And you can also get these. Our master, these aren't Master Airbrush, um, but they make the same thing. I think I just clicked on the first one that popped up, but I'll show you what these are in a second. But check this out. Look at this. Two, four, six, eight, ten glass jars. Each one has its siphon, a nice seal, metal fitting at the top. Let me show you why this is awesome. All right, let's get this out of the way. Check this out. They fit perfect. Actually made for it, perfect. Now, you can have different colors ready to go. And, if you're going to do a lot of priming, check this out. Check this out, guys. They're little caps. So what you do is, you put, you're going to put your... Uh, your primer or your colors, whatever you're gonna use most of the time, you got a cap so the air doesn't get in. Boom, you're covered. It's got a small breathable hole and I would just put a piece of little tape over that so you're ready to go. And that's it. So now you can label it, your primer. You can put, or if you just use it for primers, you can see one's gray, one's black, one's a white primer. You just have all your primers ready and then you can just pop her out, put a few drops of lacquer in it, come back, boom, and throw this in. You're now airbrushing with another color. Isn't that great? We'll actually do that right here. So we will mix all three of these and they'll all be ready. This is awesome. I was looking for these for the other older airbrush I was using. And um, I finally stumbled upon these. But isn't that great with the caps? Here they are right here. And they fit perfect. They're not made by Master, so I was afraid I bought the wrong ones by accident, but they're all the same. They all fit perfect. And it stops it from spilling, too. Check that out. That's awesome. All right, let me show you how you change the head. And then after that, we're just going to run through some tests. We'll leave the, the medium tip on it is what we're going to use for the test. Okay, now, let me show you how you change it. It comes with an Allen wrench. Fits in perfectly right here. You know, loosen it up. That's all it takes, just a little loosening. And all you do is you're going to twist this right here. You're going to hold it, and you're just going to turn this off. It's a really, really snug fit, which is good. And that's it. That's it. We're off. Pop her off. You get the other one. So yeah, here's the larger one. We'll pull this out. Sorry if I'm off camera, guys. I'm doing this from a strange angle. You're going to fit this into the tip. And then you're just going to come right in here. Sorry, guys. It's tough to do this while on camera. There it is. And you're just going to screw in. That's it. Tightening it up. Ready to go. This is the only part you really got to clean because all that's coming out of here is air. So it's really quite easy. It's like it's like having a upscale spray can. So, you, but you just get to change the colors from the spray can. You're not going to get super details with this, but for base coating and doing cars, really good results. Particularly at 60 bucks with the three tips, the hoses, the jar. It, it's a really good deal. Um, two cans of, to me, a spray paint or Mr. Color spray paint is going to run you almost 20 bucks at just two colors. So to get the whole kit. And then you throw in these, which was under 20 bucks for the set of 10. And these were about 6 bucks for the caps. 
you got a full system ready to go as far as laying down primers and I think nice even coats but um, let's uh, get some colors ready let me pause the camera here we'll prep it up and we'll go over to the booth and we'll show you how good this thing is all right guys here we are we're going to prep uh, well this was already pre thinned this is let me show you the actual jar hold on guys these are the jars that the all clads come in but I started using this gray so often I just put it in a squeeze bottle and they come ready to uh, to spray you don't even have to thin them and they have a bunch of ball bearings in them I think I believe they do yeah you can hear them so all I did was I just I used the lighter one quite a bit see the difference in shade and uh, these are really good primers. These are the unsung hero of primers, these all clads. But anyway, I put it in one of these bottles that I got at the tattoo supply store, these squeeze bottles. And uh, just put it all in, including the, the ball bearings that came with it. You know, I printed this on my printer, gray primer. I put the number so I know which one it is. And so, I mean, there's no prepping for this. But what we do is we're just going to get this jar. And you're going to need a good amount on this for a siphon feed. I think it requires quite a bit off the bottom. So let's just go ahead and squeeze a bunch in. And like I said, I'm going to leave it in this jar anyway, probably. With the little cap on it. That's good. Now come up. Always use a rag. Wipe off the tops all the time. Now that baby's ready to go. Seal her up. It's got a seal on it. Don't forget, you can put a little piece of tape here. We're not going to need it now, but when I put it in storage, I'll put a little piece of scotch tape over that. I'll hold it right up. Now, uh, I guess we'll prep one of these. Yeah, we'll, I'll prep the uh, the Tamiya. This is Metallic Brown X34. Really pretty color. Um, mix it up on my uh, 4E mixer here. Love this thing. It's coming really handy. I use it every day. And um, that should probably do it. Let's see. Oh yeah, beautiful. Look at that. So, we'll grab another jar. Let me get one of my siphon, my uh, pipettes. Sorry if I'm out of range. The microphone should be picking up everything. All right, let's go ahead and pour a bunch of this in here. Let's just suck it right up. Now this we're going to thin uh, around 50-50 with some lacquer thinner. I'm not going to spray a ton with this, we're going to spray maybe those little gumpla pieces and a spoon. We're just going to show you how we're going to switch colors and, and whatnot. So we're not going to go crazy with that. Let me put that pipette in some thinner. All right. So put the cap on this. And where's my, uh, you know, we use my Air Force thinner. This is my uh, leveling thinner for my brand. This will be on the website soon. Good news. Next week, we have a boatload of new colors coming. And uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Let me grab another pipette here. All right, let's put this. And that should do it. 50-50 is good. As you can tell, I can do everything from I have been doing this for so long that uh, you guys do it as often as I do. You won't have to measure anymore either, you know. Just go by eye. And it's easier with these uh, glass jars, too. I can kind of see um, what I'm doing here. But solvents, you can really thin them right down. No problem. There you go. Once again, we're going to put a cap on it. And it's protected. There we go. Okay. Uh, I'll thin up the uh, number 80 cobalt blue in this one. And in this one is my, uh, hold on, is my hardware store lacquer thinner, or you can use uh, acetone. Um, these things are pretty beefy. They can handle the acetone and shoot right through. But I put lacquer thinner in here. I got two cans of this. And what we'll do is, in between, we're going to put this through, blast it through, clean it out, and put in another jar. And that's what that is. All right, so we'll keep this by the booth. Let me get this one ready. I have all three ready to go. We're going to prime and paint. And uh, watch how nice this airbrush works. See you at the booth. Okay, guys. Here we are at the booth. I got the fan going, so sorry if it's a little loud. Let me get this microphone adjusted here. That well, should be all right. Now, uh, I keep the thinner by. Now, what you can do is you can... 
without wasting any paint. You can adjust it. You get it just how you want it. If you can see it. And uh, that's how much remains in it. Look at that. So there's a lot of paint remains in it, even after you pull out the jar. Now keep a towel by. I always keep one for drips and whatnot. But it's lacquer. Everything here is a lacquer, so uh, no problems there. So we're going to start off with the primer. Here's our jar with the primer ready to go. We're going to pull the cap. Load her up. And we are ready. Always test the spoon. Now the problem is, this is a very light gray, so it's going to be tough to see it on the spoon. So let's go ahead and uh, show it on our uh, black piece here. Look at that, guys. It's like having a nice, light atomization of a spray can. I'm not losing any details. That's it. And being such a wide area, it dries really fast. You can really just do this in one shot. This will work with any primer. I just picked this. I have a lot of it in stock, so I think it'd be good for the demo. A completely primed wing. Might be a 148 scale. That's a big scale. Oh, a little bit right here. Check that out. So you can see the pattern. I'll show you right here. See that? That is awesome. Now, I don't think I can... Uh, hold on. Let's see if we can do a spoon quick. Here we go. I got a black one right here. Now, if you go slower, you're going to get a real thick coat right away. Done. Beautiful. There's still a lot in there. I don't know how you can see it. It's right about here. So, you could probably put this jar, you could do a complete giant scale kit. Prime all your stuff at once, actually, you know. So, isn't that great? We'll put that aside. And here's how we're going to clean it. You're going to pop this out, blow out all the paint, take in our lacquer, you can back flush, see it bubbling up? And with the color, it's tough with the gray, but we'll see. That's it. That's mostly water. Let's try it on the black. So I can see what's going on. I keep black cardboard here, too. I'm spraying lighter colors. No, that's just thinner coming out. That's it. So, that's good. That's clean. Now, when you pull her out, you want to tip it a little bit, and you want to go down. You can see the drips because it holds a lot in here. And that's it. We're ready to go for the next color. I'm not even going to pause the camera. Let's go right in with the Tamiya. Pop the cap. Oh, let me get the Tamiya out here. Here we go. Here we go. We're in. All right. Let's try a spoon first. Look at this. How's that? Let's see if it sprays over black. It should. We shouldn't have a problem here. Oh, it looks really good over black. Look at that. 
Beautiful color. That is awesome. All right, here we go. Let's try it on some pieces. It's so tough to get used to just pressing the button. I'm so used to uh, controlling the air. Check that out. I'll show you that, guys, once it dries at the bench. Let's do another bigger piece. Unfortunately with this, this is for doing, you know, big pieces. You're not going to get any shadow detailing or any of that. I haven't, I uh, tested the small nozzle. It's still, you can't get any control because the air, you know, you're just going to spray smaller areas. It's just, if you get this and then you get a nice 0.2 millimeter needle airbrush, and I think you got up, your bases are covered. It's overkill at that point. How nice is that? Beautiful. All right. All right. Let's uh, pause the camera. I'll clean it off again, and we'll move on to the next color. All right, guys. Let me unpause it and show you a little bit. See, it's turned the water brown. You back flush it. That shows you how much it's still in the airbrush. It's coming out clean now. Now, this should, we should be able to see with a white piece, let's say. Yeah, it's clean. Nothing in there at all. All right, so... Let her blast out. Wipe it off if needed. All right. Come in with some Mr. Color. Try to get it just right. Hold on, guys. These bigger spoons look better on camera. Let's try this. Beautiful blue color. Wow. Beautiful color. All right. Now, I want to show you guys something. Let's try it on a plastic spoon, yeah. Almost a sky blue. I don't use this blue too often. Nice. All right, let me show you what I got here. I primed this car body just before I started the video. So let's see how we can do with this. Coming out nice. Let's go back in. This airbrush works really good for uh, enamels. That's for sure. Enamels can go on nice and heavy. 
Maybe I'll use it when I test some of my paints that are coming in this week, which happen to be enamels. Looking good. All right, let me go let this dry, clean this out, and we'll go over the results. All right, guys, let's go over the results really quick. This is... Uh, not like we're comparing colors or anything. We're just going over to conclude the results of the airbrush. Here is the primered wing. Not much exciting to say there, but no details are lost. Hard to see there on camera. No details are lost at all. Nice and smooth. You saw how fast it covered. And uh, it covered the black beautifully. And I did the car, which I did off camera, but the car came out perfect too. All right, here's the Tamiya. They're acrylic. Look at how nice that came out. Actually a little nicer than I thought because I was worried about the little crevices and stuff, which actually in this kit gets covered up anyway. But uh, look at that. It came out quite even and nice. And with the car, very nice. A little bit of a hack job. It was quick for me. I wanted to show you guys quick how to do it. I normally would sand it twice and go over it again, but I wanted to show you quick. And uh, if you have a car that's molded in white, this was red. Um, matter of fact, I pulled a few kits to test. I'm going to go over white quickly to show you how nice. None of my, <laughs> none of them are in white, so I just uh, put gray over this quick just to show you. But spraying this uh, directly over white, and uh, these are white spoons, no primer. And uh, this was um, one of my enamels I'm testing, an orange that... Uh, I might have this week. It's coming soon. This is one of my oranges I tested. That's why I said it works great with enamels. And uh, that's straight over white plastic, no primer. These are what I put in the preview picture earlier in the week. Look at how nice and even and beautiful. So, and with enamels, you really, it's almost flawless. It just goes right on and dries like a nice glass finish like that. And But anyway, uh, a good airbrush. 60 bucks you're in the door you got three nozzle tips it's basically you, you're getting a nice spray can and you choose your colors you know how you want to go and but it's really good for priming uh, coats in large car bodies uh, particularly if you're going to do a car body over um, a white body with an enamel you're going to get a beautiful beautiful finish this was a lacquer which i do like too but i like to put it i like to uh put it over a a white plastic when possible I'll just rough up the surface you know but still it came out nice you know but um, that's it I think it's a great airbrush at 60 bucks now don't forget you're gonna want to get these a box of these I'll put a link for these too because now you keep everything particularly your primers you can keep white flat black if you do a lot of flat black you just keep your basics um, in the jars and label them so you're, you know, you're always ready to go then I'm gonna put the link in for the little plastic caps that we're going to cover them with so we can keep these in storage there we go and that's it now you might want to invest in these dental these uh 
these are called gum. These are I'm gonna dentect. There's a, it's a brand name, and uh, with this you can actually uh, pull this apart, get in there, you know, clean out really good, put some acetone or some thinner on that, and then uh, when you're done at the end of the day, you can unscrew it like I showed you. It pops right off. Stick it in a little jar, put some thinner in it, a couple drops, let it sit overnight. It'll clean itself right out. No harm, no foul, no needle to bend. It's really can take an abuse. And this is a uh, this is a dagger cleaner. I call them. It's a sharp point. It gets right into the tip. You know, I, I wouldn't do it from here. I would do it when you take it out. These come from uh, um, Harder and Steinbeck. Actually, makes these. They recommend them. You put it in and just twist on a little bit out of the nozzle, and uh, that's what this is for too. And that's it. Now the other thing I can tell you is you could probably get bigger jars. These don't happen to fit my lids. But around here somewhere is one that fits the lid. You can really <laughs> go to town by filling this up with whatever your favorite primer or color is. It's the wrong angle, but these do come with a steeper angle. I know that for a fact. See the angle is off? You want a 60 degree angle. That's what these are. And you can see the difference right there. All right. Anyway, guys, that's it. A quick test of the Posh. Uh, Posh H airbrush set. I'm going to show you the box one more time. Hold on one second while I grab it. Here it is. Posh H Series. And don't forget, it also came with this little cup. I didn't use it. But uh, if you want to do uh, something quick and easy, you need a little touch-up quickly, you can just throw that on there. And you, you touch up. When you're done, you just flush this right out with some acetone or some thinner, and you're good to go. So that's another nice feature it has. And, uh, and that's it. And uh, it comes with the hose. Yep, and all the attachments you probably need. Even comes with these jars, which I didn't use. I'd rather have glass, particularly when I go to clean them out, you know. And uh, and that's it. I, I do recommend it for the basics that I showed you. And uh, I want you guys to uh, know that my more of my paints uh, hopefully will be coming this week. I will uh, put up a notice in the community section when they're on their way in. I got new labels. They're shiny. Uh, glossy labels for the outside and we got I think we're gonna have about at least 20 colors in a, a special metalized color I'm working on some crazy colors here and uh, some unique names you guys will enjoy it very much <laughs> when you see them and uh, uh, you'll like what you'll see anyway guys uh, like the video please if you haven't already it helps a lot with the channel and uh, subscribe if you haven't already because uh, I have a lot more tests to go uh, I have my new paint test coming in. As soon as I get them in, I'll set that up. And we're going to be testing the new Hobby Mio paints very soon. And uh, those are coming up also. And um, I'm also doing, where is it? It's right off screen here. I'm doing these. Glow in the dark and uh, UV reactive blue where you put a black light on it. And uh, this will glow from light and this will glow when you put a black light. And uh, I'll be going over those too. Uh, pretty unique and they both have their own uh, purposes and uh, we'll be doing that soon too and uh, anyway guys thanks for watching have a great weekend and uh, we will see you in the next video